when you dethroned the GOAT, let me ask you this. Did you think you were going to win that, that show? I knew I was going to win. Champion mentality right there. Why? Because, uh, you know, four times I finished second to Ronnie. I witnessed, you know, being the last one standing next to him before he hit the floor with victory. And each time, you know, you look at the body gesture of that person. And in 05, I had him on the ropes. You know, I, I was, remember, I'm a 10 years, there's a 10 year age gap. So I was 10 years younger than Ronnie. So the body starts having wear and tear. It doesn't matter how great you are, right? All champions fall eventually. And age is just, we cannot beat age. So when I watched in 05, I watched him hit the floor. I said, this is the last time. In fact, I predicted, I predicted in 06, I would defeat him. I actually said I would shave my head at the time. I was like the only bodybuilder with hair left. This is probably before you even were following it. This was 2006. I won the title. And I said, I'm going to. No, I remember the him. flow. You had the crazy. Yeah. Man. So I had to create, you know, so I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to win this. I'm going to be set history and be the first guy to defeat a, a reigning Olympian on stage. Let me interject there. The, the year before you came in second to him, right? I did. Yes. And, and every the year before that second, the year before that second. Okay. Did you, why this time were you like, I'm going to win this time versus, did you have that same mentality the other ones? Or you just, you're like, I just don't tell people that. I had the same mentality. I always thought I was going to win, but I, I absolutely knew in 06, it was my time. My body was coming to its own. I was 33. I had just turned 33. Your body reaches a level that you just, as I was prepping, I, I remember rolling a week out. I was almost 290 pounds. I won that title at over 270, 273. That's a lot of mass. At five foot nine. So I just knew everything was just clicking. I did a photo shoot like two weeks prior for Flex Magazine. And when I walked in, you know, the jaws hit the floor and said, it's your time. Because Ronnie was there prior and they knew that I was coming hard for this one. And that's when, you know, I said, this is it. I mean, I won that title that night, changed history and uh, became the 11th. Were you were you and Ronnie uh, last kind of conversation with him? Were you all like close or I don't know in that world if everyone's like, hey, great job or like, I'm going to crush you. He, he was going for record nine. Right. So that was, the record's eight, right? Yes. Yeah. So it was a hard moment for him because he was ready to set history where I was ready to, to set history by beating him. And, you know, he was the undefeated. Like he, the, everyone said he will never lose. And I knew that I was the one to, to beat that, to conquer him. And, and what I basically um, felt like, because we were close, we traveled, we did a ton of guest appearances. What, what they would do before social media existed is they would build up our appearances at events and they would put the one, two guy against each other. Because to be honest, and now no disrespect to all the other guys, during those Olympia years that I was first and second to Ronnie, it's really a lot of the conversation was based on us mm -hmm. and not necessarily about third, fourth, fifth. You know what I mean? So, that. well, it was, it's a little disrespectful, but it, in the sense when the same two guys end up first and second, you know, for five, six years, it's really hard to kind of change the narrative. Right. Yeah. So for me, uh, you know, we were so close because we traveled every weekend together. We trained together. We'd eat together. We'd laugh together. We'd go to clubs together. We did it all. And the magazines would try to create this, this, this battle between us. And they tried to get personal. And that's the funny thing is they had this people reading the books would think that, oh, these guys aren't as close, but we were actually really close. But when it came down to the Olympia and we were backstage, we weren't friends. Yeah. We didn't hang out in the same dressing room and, and put oil on each other's back or anything like that. It was all business. Because at the time, yes, there was a purse involved. We had huge contracts. We had, you know, a whole gang of, I mean, I would have 100 people there, you know, that I would have to get tickets for just to show up. And uh, he had his family and his fans. And, you know, there were a lot, you know, it was like the Ronnie Coleman fans against the Jay Cutler fans. And I think we both shifted fans because the respect factor we had for each other on stage was apparent and people knew. And today you'll still see that there's a lot of 
events that still bring us in and we're very um, respectful for each other. Yeah. What is going on guys? I am Max Tuning, your host. I hope you enjoyed this little clip. If you wanna see the full, magical, lovely episode, just click the link down in the description or search Don't Be Sour on your favorite podcast streaming service. And remember, thank you for tuning in.